Cambridge City Council will now be in session. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, please. Conaway. Here. Evant Cho. Here. Lofman. Here. Leonard. Here. Marlin. McMillan. Here. Wolverton. Here. Mr. Lofman. Motion to excuse Councilman Marlin. Mr. Conaway. Second the motion. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Both same sign. That motion is granted. Uh, reading of the minutes, Mr. Leonard. I make a motion we dispense of the reading of the minutes and place on file. Mr. Wolverton. I second that motion. All in favor of that motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. That motion is granted. Mayor's report. Mayor Orr. Good evening, everybody. Uh, got a lot of little things to cover tonight and some big things, so stay tuned. I'll try to get them all. Uh, first on the paper in front of you. We have number one, request from code enforcement officer, request to discuss two properties to the Guernsey Land Revitalization Corporation. B, request to appropriate $2,523.35 to services by contract. Number two, request from the safety director, A, to request to transfer $1,000 in the general fund miscellaneous workers' compensation to legal fees. And B, request to transfer 400 from safety equipment to telephone. Okay, all those will be referred to the Finance Committee. Thank you, Council President. Um, I do have a couple specials tonight before I go into some community things. And first up, I'd like to have Safety Director Rocky Hill please come forward. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. I have two areas that I want to uh, talk to you about just briefly. Uh, first of all, if you don't know that uh, this week is National Police Officer Memorial Week and tomorrow is National Peace Officer Memorial Day, so all flags will be at half staff. So if you see that around town, you'll know what that's for. What I really want to cover tonight, though, is, uh, you know, it's always nice when we have uh, uh, an opportunity to recognize uh, our employees for things that they do, uh, especially when it happens to be one of the administrators in one of the departments because they uh, go over and above uh, what they've done uh, in their job. And uh, tonight I'd like to recognize the uh, uh, fire chief, uh, Jeff Deeks, for his accomplishments in completing the OFE, which was the Ohio Fire Executive Program, uh, which was created and administered by the uh, Ohio Fire and Emergency Services Foundation. Uh, it's an executive development program, and uh, this what this does is basically assess, <laughs> enhance, and refines the leadership qualities of chiefs who are currently leading in their respective organizations and develops bench strength uh, in high potential senior officers that can move into positions of greater responsibility. Uh, this is not just a week-long course. This is a two and a half year pro program. Each, uh, about every six months he would go for a, a full week uh, of classes and presentations, research and development up until uh, his recent wow. graduation uh, here this past April. Uh, the curriculum itself is 22 learning modules. And just to give you an idea of some of the things that uh, they go through uh, during this two and a half year process is uh, attend nearly 200 hours of classes. They write and submit eight assigned papers. They read selected or all chapters from 16 different books. Uh, read 50 or more assigned articles, uh, prepare and deliver two 25-minute presentations using PowerPoint software, they give three impromptu speeches, they conduct an applied research project and submit a final written paper uh, on that project for the OFE archives, and prepare and submit an organizational evaluation uh, for their home department. So devoted uh, we talked about 200 hours of in-class time, but they have over 400 hours of class time that are away from there in their research projects and developing things. If you would go on the Ohio Fire Chiefs Association website, you would see the OFE archives 
and be able to read the entire paper of uh, Chief Deeks, which is entitled The Evaluation of Fire Inspector Staffing Procedure in the Cambridge Fire Department. So he did something that was something very important for what uh, he's dealing with down there. And at this time, I'd like to call Chief Deeks up here to be recognized by each, each of you. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you. All right. Uh, good evening, members of council. Um, I kind of really didn't, I don't like this kind of thing. I, I'm, I'd rather get the guys up front and all that, some of the fire station, but, you know, Safety Director Hill felt this was important. Um, it's, I didn't think I was going to get into class, to be honest with you, because you had to do so many assigned research or papers, shorter papers, to even be accepted. And then when I got the letter of acceptance in the mail from the fire chiefs, I said, oh man, what I get myself into? <laughs> and, uh, but it was a challenge. Um, I don't, we tell kids, I don't, I, I don't want to be average. Uh, I want Cambridge Fire Department to be the spotlight, for that matter, for the whole state of Ohio. And, and I think we're, we're making a progress towards that. Um, growing our influence, we learned a lot about. Um, I like to think it is working because currently, right now, within the department, I have one fire, one engineer going for his bachelor's degree, and I have three uh, people going for their associate's degree in fire science. So, uh, education to me is is a big part um, to help prepare our department for the future and, and, and what it handles. Um, I know I drove. Safety Director Hill probably crazy sometimes because there's times during my research part where I just kind of lost it and <coughs> vented to him and he listened to me, uh, got me calmed down, redirected me and was able to get through it. Um, Otter Sue Ellen Johnson, she helped uh, tremendously. She was one of my uh, people I interviewed, Mr. Vancho, I interviewed in his office at the hospital there. Um, Bob Hollins, I spent, I was only going to get down there for an hour. <laughs> And I could have stayed down. I wish I could have stayed down there all day because he was such a joy um, to talk to. Um, it was just really um, interesting, his thoughts and everything. But anyhow, I just I don't want to take up too much of the time, uh, but I do want to thank the administration, the city taxpayers, um, for allowing me to attend this. And I especially want to thank the guys uh, down at the fire station. Um, they heard me a lot. They knew when my office door was closed not to bug me, because I'm in the zone there. Um, but they stepped up too, um, took some of the responsibilities off my shoulders uh, so I can work on my research paper and, and work on it. So it was a very challenging. I met a lot of good contacts, and that's probably the most important thing. I made contacts from all over the state of Ohio from different fire departments, big departments, small departments. Um, and it's nice to be able to get on the phone, call them, and say, hey, do you have this going on? Or do you, have you seen this? Do you have policies in place? Do you have you know, any SOGs in place uh, to help? But um, it really helped me understand we've always been a reactive fire department. For the most part, we have to be reactive because we don't know what we're going to get called to day to day. My goal, I want to look for the future of our department. I want to be a proactive fire chief to get this department set up for the future, even if I don't see these things that I'm implementing, which is fine. You know, but I look at the younger guys <coughs> in the department. This is their department. This is going to be their department. And I want to do everything I can to make it set for them um, to be one of the top-notch fire departments in the state of Ohio. And, and <coughs> we'll strive for that. So. Other than that, I'm good. I have to go to another meeting, so I got to get going. So, um, thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you. He says he didn't want to say very much, but I knew better than that. Honestly, <laughs> thanks for giving him applause on this. Uh, that is no small accomplishment by any means. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's it's a great day in our department. Uh, we're very proud of our safety forces as well as every department, and not making it up. Pat ourselves on the back, but they're shooting for the moon, and, and that's huge in a small area like this because it, it just matters. Uh, we're challenged every day, everywhere in every part of the community, and it takes all. So, Chief, <coughs> congratulations. Right, thank you. Yep. Congratulations. Um, next up, um, I'm going to ask the Law Director Ferguson to come up. Um, we had some difficulties last week. Uh, as this world goes forward and we say whether it's fake news, no news, or whatever news, or the world of the computers, uh, which I don't participate much in for obvious reasons, um, we had some interesting challenges last week. And uh, with that said, we just want to speak about the facts and, and, and let it go at that. So would you come up? Again, Bill Ferguson, Law Director, City of Cambridge. 
Good evening. Good evening. It was a tragic accident about five years ago. It took place on Morton Avenue. Uh, I'm sure we've all heard about it. It was a, a, a motorcycle accident. And shortly thereafter, uh, there was a monument that was erected and placed on that location. We've probably all driven by and seen it. Mayor Orr was faced with a decision uh, recently, um, one that, that he and I talked about, absolutely positively did not want to make. I did not want to give him the legal advice that I had to give him, but if you accept a position such as these, uh, you don't get to make all the easy decisions. However, what happens sometimes is, through no one's willfulness, but there's misinformation out there. And one information, misinformation, somebody tells somebody else and it becomes a little bigger. Then it becomes a little bigger, and before you know it, it doesn't even resemble what, what actually happened to start with. So, what I wanted to, that, that memorial was removed, by the city of Cambridge last week. What I wanted to do, I know you'll hear about it, you probably have, is tell you what happened, what, what actually is the reason, what was the situation, so that we can move forward uh, all on the same page. Um, again, just the situation is tragic to a point where I, I'm not sure I have the vocabulary to describe it. But the mayor had received um, a letter uh, from a group somewhere out of state talking about uh, a religious cross being placed on city property. Frankly, I don't get stirred up about that sort of thing too much. Um, but what it did do uh, when the mayor talked to me, and I think Mr. Lanning as, as well, I said, well, where's that thing located anyway? Is, is it even have anything to do with city property? So as many of you know, an easement for a roadway is much bigger than the paved actual road that we drive on. Most of them are 60 foot, that one is 60 foot. So I asked Tom Lanning to go out and measure it for us, which he did. He came back with the bad news that the memorial was placed within the easement of Morton Avenue. So I think the first thing that's important to understand is that, and I'm sure it was inadvertent, uh, that it was, that memorial was placed within the easement. Secondly, to understand the rest of what I'm about to say, you need to understand the nature of it if you didn't look at it closely. It was essentially steel I-beam construction, so it's incredibly sturdy, um, affixed to the ground with concrete. So it was there, it wasn't moving, I mean, it, it's, it's an impediment, uh, without question. There has been belief that the reason that the memorial was removed was because of the complaint that it was in some fashion religious on city property. I can tell you that was not the reason. That was not the reason. And the reason, is actually, the actual reason is this. Um, Ohio law, and I'm not going to get way deep into the law, but you have to understand this, I believe. The Ohio Revised Code, state law, gives cities, villages, municipalities, immunity from civil liability being sued for ordinary negligence. If that didn't exist, we would spend all of our time and all of our money defending frivolous litigation. <clears throat> so if something happens normally, we aren't responsible. And when I say damages, that's money. Somebody's suing us because they did something and say we caused it, we were negligent, city you owe us money. So that basically provides well, wait just a moment, I'll tell you what it provides. That a political subdivision is not liable in damages in a civil action for injury, death, or loss to person or property allegedly caused by any act or omission of the political subdivision or an employee of the political subdivision in connection with performing a governmental or proprietary function. Maintenance, installation, repair of roads, obvious government function. However, with any rule, there always comes an exception. There are certain things that we can do that do away with the immunity, that make us liable for damages, that make us able to be sued uh, and have to pay money damages to a person. There are a number of those, but one of those, say this. 
Political subdivisions are liable for injury, death, or loss to person or property caused by um, negligent failure to remove obstructions from public roads. That's a specific uh, exception to the rule on liability. I advised Mayor Orr uh, regarding all of the facts I just advised you about the potential liability um, and the decision then was made to remove it. Now you may say to me, well Bill, I see those wooden crosses all the time at accident scenes. Uh, how come there can't be one here? And I'll tell you what the difference is. Those wooden crosses that are placed in the ground, if you run over those with a motorcycle or a car or something else that you're driving, are going to fall over. They aren't going to be an obstruction or impediment that would cause you injury. The item that was removed, the memorial that was removed, was such that, I mean, it was, it was sturdy. As I said, I-beam steel construction, concrete in the ground. If you hit that with your vehicle, regardless of the type of vehicle you're likely driving at any speed, uh, the possibility of injury is significant. So we really had two issues here. One was the legal issue regarding liability, and two, from a public safety standpoint. There's already been a tragic accident there. Um, we have an obligation in my mind and certainly in the mayor's mind to do what we can to avoid uh, a repeat of that type of thing. So it's with all of those things in mind uh, that the uh, memorial was removed. Uh, prior to doing that, I know that Tom and or, Mayor Orr and or Tom Lanning, uh, I believe spoke with a family member or family members to let them know what was occurring. Um, I myself had some phone calls and spoke to some people in that regard to give them this same amount of information. So that's what happened, that's why it happened. Um, and and when, when Tom Lanning came back to me and said, Bill, this thing is in the easement, you know, I just got a sick feeling in my stomach. I don't want to have to give the mayor the advice I gave him and he certainly didn't want to follow it. Um, but again, the positions require that when we hold people as a city accountable to follow the law, we need to do it ourselves. So if there are any questions, I'll be happy to take them now. Any questions of the, uh, Mr. Ferguson? Thank you, Bill. Thank you all. <clears throat> Thanks, Mayor. Thank you. I, need I think I took your papers. Yeah. I think that's all of them, right? Mayor, yes, I got. Do we have a chance to make a comment? Uh, yeah, yeah in, we'll, in, we'll a little, the, in a little bit. We got, during the got, uh, audience portion, you'll be able to uh, come to the mic. Yes. Yeah. Um, anyhow, that we could go into that more, but at the same time, that is the facts on that. Uh, it was a hard situation, and I appreciate the law director coming up and at least explaining what I was dealing with on the backside. Now, there's a lot of other little things, but um, knowing the family myself, I did all I could to leave it alone as long as we could, but at the end of the day, it was amazing we made it five years. Um, moving into some more things, I do need to get this out. Um, the cleanup came and went over the weekend. Uh, incredible what goes on down there. I'm going to let, well, and Kim was there the whole time, and I want to thank her and praise her for coming right out of the hospital and standing right in there, and her ward appreciates that. So, um, at the same time, I'm not going to get into a whole lot of details other than the fact if we didn't do what we do, I don't know what we would really... Whew. And I say that every year. And I think we set another record. So, it's obvious we need it. Um, broke my heart a little bit, but I understand some of the circumstances. Uh, our school levy went out there, a lot of hard work, and it didn't make it. Uh, Depending on how you look at the numbers, I'm always trying to be optimistic. You could tell they chewed on it and thought about it. it. Came dangerously close for a little bit of time, and then it slid a little bit. But it's still a doable situation. Uh, everyone can debate the facts and the figures, but the facts are this: no new money since '92. We have a lot of need, and as a mayor of a city, I will tell you, you cannot complete the circle and attract businesses and keep jobs if you don't plug that hole. People can say, well, I don't need any more money. Well, none of us want any more bills. I get that. We're all going to make hard decisions. And I respect those that vote. That's what voting's about. But my job is to lead the city to the best of my ability, and I'm here to tell you 
that we need to look hard on that and trust our leaders, ask hard questions, communicate, and continue to work forward and whatever possible. If you have a question about a specific thing, that's what those people are for, just like some of the things I have to deal with. Or you guys, or girls, or whatever, you know, that's, what, that's called life. A little town that we're very proud of. Um, little thing, Clark Street, I think you've seen it. You went from shaking up your car to a little bit smoother out there. I want to praise the decision makers. I guess I was one of those, but same time, truly, the engineer downstairs came to us and said to the administration, you know, rather than fill potholes and shake ourselves to death for the next two years, it was bigger than that. And Parnell and Associates stepped up, got a good number, and that should seal the deal and get us closer to the next two years as we dig underneath and over top and then eventually rip the whole thing out. So um, things are a little better for our school buses and things like that and our ambulances and our main route. Update on Hall's Drive-In, just in case you wanted to know. I appreciate the neighbors mowed close. Water department will be mowing and right now. It went through the weekend and city violation <laughs> over the weekend, I think. But we're waiting on asbestos removal. It's been, we, we, it's in process. But we're going to have it on the ground in my lifetime. I promise you that. Unfortunately, I wish it was faster than it is. Police Department of Construction is going well, and actually my understanding is they're slightly ahead of schedule, but we don't want to brag about that because it could slightly get behind schedule at some point, but they're making great progress there, and Safety Director Hill is on, on top of that, and I appreciate that. Water line on Beatty Avenue, for those that are inconvenienced, they're starting to seal up and dig into that a little bit more, and that's going to be an in-house deal after I was basically told it was going to be an out-of-house out deal, but now we've looked into it a little deeper, and I think we're going to try to do it, and so we're going to try to get that open back up. Again, that'll every bit of another month ahead of us with weather doing what it's going to do to us this week. Um, met with landowners on uh, Fifth Street Fire, along with a couple others, but that one's the one that seems to be stirring the headlines a little bit. Uh, I think by the middle of June, we'll have our facts nailed down and we'll be ready to proceed, whether it gets remodeled, removed. But again, and I'll, I'll stand on this, I've never had a family home catch on fire before. Well, actually I did, but it wasn't the extent of that one. Um, and we want to work with the family at the best of our ability to make sure it's not, it, you know, there's people living in there. It wasn't abandoned like some other situations we've had. And we want to make sure they have every attempt to do whatever they possibly can. I know it's an eyesore and safety hazard, and we've got it marked appropriately. And actually, there's a couple more within striking distance of that area. That it's not a fire, but could equally said it's not exactly a romantic landmark by any means. So we've got our challenges there. <clears throat> Mowing update, we're going to be behind up until June, probably 10th. Uh, last week alone, we mowed 57 yards in this town that were in violation well beyond 8 inches. At the same time we mowed those yards, I can show you another 25 to 50 that were borderline, and as we speak, with me standing here right now, I guarantee they're in violation. And we'll release them, most of those this week, and deal with this rain, which... As we know in our own yards, what that what that does. Um, no easy solution. Uh, all I can tell you is we will, as administration, like we do every year, battle for all it's worth to get everything finally mowed by the first holiday weekend. That's my personal goal. We're going to lose, battle each other for the two or three weeks. The good Lord's in charge of the weather. It was cold, 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 and the next week it was 80 degrees and the grass shot up. But with that said, some people you know have to have a chance to get them lawnmowers livened up. But I will tell you this. By the, uh, if your yard has not been mowed yet, you're going to see us shortly. So if you don't get out there ahead of us, $175 later, don't come crying to me. Because I'm not going to listen to it. Um, I want to praise the YMCA for continuing to push ahead on their program out there. They're trying to hook those buildings together and raise some money. And I'll just throw it out there for the future. Not that we don't have enough to dream about. But I would like to see a swimming pool on that indoors for our children, quality of life, and share that with all the school systems and have them maybe put a little bit in the till as a maintenance thing. And I, I'm just planting seeds and mines because I could drop dead tomorrow, but 
I want to know that this continues to go on. Um, and then, just because I did put it in here, we had our first meeting with the explosive expert for the 4th of July, and I'm here to tell you things went well last year, and we got a couple secrets going to this year. So if you're at the sound of my voice, save a little bit of money and a little donation will help, because that's a good thing out at City Park, and that'll be on the 4th of July, and, and we're going to have at it. And last but not least, Cambridge Police Academy Citizens Alumni are holding their first soup and salad luncheon Thursday, May 17th from 11 to 2 in the back in the basement of Mr. Lee's restaurant. A variety of soups, chili, vegetable, cream, broccoli, and others. And a Chinese auction will take place. And this, all the proceeds go to the police department and the Cambridge Police Academy. We're trying to, as a community, to support what they do down there. As we well know, we are challenged in this world at a level we've never seen before, and we are very appreciative for those that stand in the gap in our churches, in our police, our fire, and our citizens that work every day and go home, raise their children, and this committee here that help us support our town and battle to make sure our neighborhoods stay the best they can. I could go on and on, and I won't, because we'll have other things going on. But at the same time, Council, does anyone have any questions of me tonight? <clears throat> Are there any questions of the Mayor? Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council <coughs> President. Uh, the City Attorney's already given his report. We'll go to communications. I have two requests from the Law Director. The first one is a request to the Finance Committee to address you with regards to amending the compensation for the Assistant Law Director. Mr. Vancho? Motion to refer to Finance Committee. Mr. Wolverton. Second the motion. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, and that motion is granted. Next, please. Uh, the other request from the law director is requesting authorization to apply for the SBAA and the VOCA grants. Ms. McMillan. Motion to refer to finance. Mr. Conaway. Second. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. That motion is granted. Next. I have a request to the council from Judge Liston. Cambridge Municipal Court is requesting Cambridge City Council accept funds awarded as Ohio Supreme Court Technology Grant number 344 in the amount of $44,390 and Ohio Supreme Court Technology Grant 345, number 345 in the amount of $26,180. The court requests these funds be appropriated. Mr. Vancho. Motion to refer to Finance Committee. Mr. Wolverton. Second that motion. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion is granted. Is that it? That's it. Okay. Uh, reports to committees. Report of Finance Committee, May the 7th. We recommend that Council authorize participation in the ODOT winter contract for road salt. Any questions of the committee on that report? Next, please. Report of Finance Committee, May the 7th. We recommend that Council authorize the administration to advertise for bids and enter to contract for the 2018 Continuous Street Improvement Project. Any questions of the committee on that report? Next, please. Report of Finance Committee, May the 7th. We recommend that Council authorize the administration to renew the Cambridge City Schools Agreement to continue the school resource officer position. Any questions on that report? Next, please. Report of City Services Committee, May the 7th. We recommend that Council issue a permit to Cambry Shrine Club to solicit for funds on Saturday, June the 2nd. Any questions of the committee on that report? Okay, we'll move on to unfinished business. Is there anything under unfinished business? Seeing nothing, we'll go to the audience portion. Uh, anybody that wishes to speak before council <coughs> may approach the microphone, state your name and address. Uh, we limit uh, the time to five minutes. Um, and uh, the rules of council don't permit any personal attacks. Um, but uh, we'll be more than happy to listen to any business you have. So. And also, yeah, um, 
this this is your chance to address council uh, if you, if you need to, to address like the mayor or or the city the law director or somebody like that uh, you would need to make an appointment with them so your your business is with us right now okay, my my name is Dave glass pastor Freedom Chapel friend of the mayor here his granddad and uh, live at six four five six one Arrowhead Road Cambridge Ohio Thank you. Uh, it came to my attention with, with the cross being taken down here recently. Got a, got a lot of responses from a lot of folks. And I wanted to let the city council know and future city councils, as well as the mayor and future mayors, that a cross, to some degree, at least if it's objected to, would probably be on religious reasons. And I don't know for sure if freedom from religion did file a complaint against the city of Cambridge or not. But uh, we as a Christian community in general, at least the 300 or so who spoke to me, we do not want you to take tax dollars away from anything in our wonderful community. We love Cambridge. We love this city. We love, we love our city fathers and mothers who work. We love the park. We love the school. We love this city. Uh, our church particular, we are independent. We don't send money to a distant headquarters. We spend it all on kids right here. We're taking every teen who wants to come this Sunday, roller skating. We go every, every month. We go bowling every other month. We give parents gas to drive if they need to get there. We give kids cash to spend after they get there. We get 15 pizzas every Wednesday night, four birthday cakes, dinner every Sunday. We help drug addicts by the hundreds, alcoholics by the hundreds, visit uh, folks in jail by the hundreds. And we love this community. What I would like Mr. Mayor here to know, and all of you today, or uh, I have even talked to, talked to folks much younger than me when I am dead and gone. If somebody brings a religious complaint against this city, whether it's the nativity scene or whatever it may be, whatever it may be, uh, have the mayor or someone just call the churches, call any, 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 any minister, I think, of any Bible-believing church, and just say, look, our city is under attack. Somebody's wanting a suit against the, the nativity scene or cross, which really should be cast out as frivolous because the 9-11 memorial, which was just installed, has the steel girder that somebody did take a cross, which is a device of execution, hundreds of years before Christ, two criminals crucified beside of him, so uh, kind, of, kind of hard to make that a Christian thing. But somebody carved Jesus' image in it, and with the New York City and their courts, the state of New York and their courts and district courts and the U.S. Supreme Court and tax dollars, everybody has agreed that that cross be part of the 9-11 memorial. And so it is. And was dedicated by a publicly Christian minister. And so it was. And everything paid for with tax dollars, totally approved by all the courts at every level. So it would be great if our judges could free you from uh, the time or concern or public outcry or anything else that any such lawsuit just be cast out as frivolous. We have a lot of things in Cambridge to deal with. But should a case ever come to simply call the churches, let us give you money. 100 churches in this county, 100 bucks a piece, barely a dollar a person. You have $10,000 within 24 hours. You come back to us in the next week, the next month, whatever you need. And we see you fighting on behalf of what is good for our community. Our churches work hard to help many of the people that nobody else wants anything else to do with. But we like, we, we like nativity scenes. We like to see some symbol of what this country was built on, of George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, and the rest of our founding fathers. And you come to us, you send me a bill personally, we will get you money, we will get you thousands of dollars, we will get you scores of thousands of dollars. And you will stand for what is right to help us make Cambridge the absolute best place on the face of the earth to live and raise our families and do the best we can for the generation coming on. Love the mayor, appreciate the mayor. Uh, some of you that I know, but we want right and good and godliness. We're behind you all the way. Don't expect you to spend one penny. Give us a chance to give you money to do this. And uh, initially, if I'm alive, send me the bill personally. Send me the bill. Okay? That's all, thank you. Thank you, Pastor.
Okay. Um, anybody else? Uh, okay, we'll move on. Uh, new business. Anything under new business? We'll go to ordinances and resolutions. Resolution authorizing participation in the ODOT winter contract for road salt. Uh, Mr. Ancho? Motion to suspend. Mr. Leonard? Second that. Roll call on the suspension, please. Ivancho? Yes. Loffman? Yes. Conaway? Yes. McMillan? Yes. Wolverton? Yes. Leonard? Yes. Um, Ms. McMillan? Motion to pass. Mr. Conaway? Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Loffman? Yes. McMillan? Yes. Conaway? Yes. Ivancho? Yes. Leonard? Yes. Wolverton? Yes. And that ordinance is declared adopted. Next, please. An ordinance issuing permit to Cambry Shrine Club. <laughs> Mr. Wolverton? Motion to suspend. Mr. McMillan? Second the motion. Roll call on the suspension, please. Hoffman? Yes. Conaway? Yes. Leonard? Yes. Evancho? Yes. Wolverton? Yes. McMillan? Yes. Mr. Hoffman? Motion to pass. Mr. Conaway? Second to pass. Uh, any discussion? Roll call, please. Conaway? Yes. Leonard? Yes. Loffman? Yes. McMillan? Yes. Wolverton? Yes. Evancho? Yes. And that ordinance is declared adopted. Next one, please. An ordinance authorizing the administration to advertise for bids and enter into contract for the 2018 Continuous Street Improvement Project. Mr. Vancho? Motion to suspend. Mr. Wolverton? Second the motion. Roll call on the suspension, please. Conaway? Yes. McMillan? Yes. Evancho? Yes. Loffman? Yes. Wolverton? Yes. Leonard? Yes. Mr. Loffman? Motion to pass. Mr. Wolverton? Second the motion. Any discussion? Roll call, please. McMillan? Yes. Leonard? Yes. Conaway? Yes. Ivancho? Yes. Wolverton? Yes. Loffman? Yes. And that ordinance is declared adopted. Next one, please. An ordinance authorizing the administration to renew the Cambridge City Schools Agreement to continue the school resource officer position. Mr. Conaway? Motion to suspend. Mr. Loffman? Second to suspend. We'll call on the suspension, please. Ivancho? Yes. Loffman? Yes. Conaway? Yes. McMillan? Yes. Wolverton? Yes. Leonard? Yes. Mr. Vancho? Motion to pass. Mr. Wolverton? Second the motion. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Loffman? Yes. McMillan? Yes. Conaway? Yes. Evancho? Yes. Leonard? Yes. Wolverton? Yes. And that ordinance is declared adopted. <coughs> okay, um, move on to miscellaneous. Mr. Vancho? Yes, the uh, Finance Committee will meet uh, next Monday. Uh, May 21st at 4.30. Okay. Anybody have anything else? Mr. Leonard? I got one other. Um, you know, Sunday on the headlines of the paper, um, the one thing that was, that was close to me, uh, there was a young child struck by a car on uh, Fifth Street. And um, I, just, I just wanted to say, you know, you know, we, we just need to slow down as a community when we're out here on the road. This child was in a crosswalk. He was doing what he was supposed to be doing, where he was supposed to be. And because of a senseless act of somebody, and I'll just call it out the way it is, uh, that should have never happened. And uh, I just want to send our thoughts and prayers out to that child, ask for a speedy recovery for him, and, and just ask our citizens to please watch what they're doing and watch out for our children in this town. That's all. And one side note to that story, he was uh, able to go yeah. to his baseball game Saturday morning, wasn't able to play, but at least he was there. So uh -huh. that, was, yes. that was good to see. Uh -huh. Mr. Phillip. Yes, I um, want to touch base a little bit on the cleanup that took place over the weekend. Um, Kim and I were talking, and we think it might be our ninth year that we've done this. Um, it was pretty busy, <laughs> to say the least. I always like to give a shout out to those individuals that were there and took part in it as well. First of all, the administration, uh, Mayor Orr, Safety Director Rocky Hill, Service Director Tom Lanning, Property Code Enforcement Officer Kim Conrath, because without, first and foremost, their passion for this uh, and to continue to do this, we wouldn't be able to do it. Um, some of the fellows that were involved from the street department were Bill Tushansky, Matt O'Donnell, Jared Gisillium, Kirk Weatherall, Dustin Derry, and Scott Caldwell. From the water department was Gary Brown, Eric Higgins, and Jeremy Tolbert. The water plant 
was Sean Kirkbride, the sewer department was Louis Dehovic and Randy Fabian. On Saturday, Judge Teresa Liston, the magistrate with Cambridge Municipal Court, actually came down with, oh gosh, Rocky, what, probably eight? At least eight community service workers. And, you know, um, I do have to commend them. It was hot. Those folks really worked just as hard as the rest of the guys. Uh, these guys put it all out there. Not only these guys that I mentioned from the, the city departments, but the community service workers as well. Um, unbelievable, especially Saturday. We think it started around 9 o'clock. It was nonstop until noon. We finally had to close the road off because we just couldn't really handle any more. Uh, everybody, it was time for them to go home. So I do commend the administration for allowing us to do this. Uh, I can't imagine what would happen if we did something like this for a week. Um, we are one of the few communities that I know of that provides this service to their residents free of charge. Um, and that is money, you know, that the city, as far as I'm concerned, is very well spent. Very well spent. And um, so again, just a shout out to everybody involved because it, it it's just unbelievable what comes through there. And I just want to also mention the grant that we um, are going to be t learning about from Judge Liston. I actually had an opportunity to speak with her um, Saturday at length. And uh, I'll tell you what, we are blessed to have her at Cambridge Municipal Court. If you don't know her or you've not met her, I would suggest that you take the time and the opportunity to do that because she's doing good things up there and it's needed and I think we're moving in the right direction. Again, shout out to everybody, uh, to those residents that took part. Thank you for being active and, and doing that and good job everybody. Anybody else? All right, seeing nothing, uh, Mr. Leonard. I make a motion, we adjourn. We are adjourned.